Hello fellow Wargamers and History Buffs. Today I am doing a tutorial on uh, Labatai and specifically how to use skirmishers in the Labatai uh, combat system. Uh, this particular topic was suggested to me by a longtime uh, viewer and a old guard uh, patron, Mark Ruggiero. Mark had asked how to use the skirmishers. Um, he's interested in, in playing the game, and this was an area of some confusion for him. So I'm going to do my best to answer the, the question dealing specifically first with infantry skirmishers, and then perhaps uh, later I'll do a video that touches on how to use cavalry skirmishers. So here we go. So by the time of the Napoleonic Wars, um, most all of the major combatants had some type of light infantry that they were using for skirmishing. Now you'll see sometimes in the uh, Labatai rule sets, depending on which one you're using, they might refer to them as trilayur, um, they might refer to them as voltaier, um, in, depending on the nation, they might be referred to as Fusiliers, or Jaegers, or Ergerski, or as um, Schutzen. And so here I have a couple of different examples from uh, the Battle of Dresden, where we have, well, basically, uh, most of the major combatants all have some type of light infantry. So here in the upper uh, corner, we've got the French, uh, Legere. These are light troops. Um, most of the uh, Labatai games from Clash of Arms are going to have a symbol like a little horn on the light infantry letting you know that it is skirmish capable. Um, when you look at the back of the unit, it will have a little two range uh, on it, and that lets you know that it's also uh, a skirmish capable and uh, can have a range of two for firing. If you're playing a game that's got, uh, that's from the Marshall Enterprises, they won't necessarily have the little horn symbol on them, uh, but they will have the little two letting you know that it is a skirmish-capable uh, unit. Um, here we've got some Russian Ergerskis here, and they've got a little horn on them as well, also the little two-range modifier. Here we've got some Austrian Grenzers. Um, they've got a uh, little horn and the two. Here we've got a uh, Prussian Fusilier, and so it can be in a number of different formations. It's one of the few that can go into skirmish that the Prussians have. And then here we have a Prussian Schutzen, and it has a notation here that it's rifle-armed, and it can actually fire out to three hexes. Um, so depending on the battle and the units that are there, you'll want to take a look at the specifics uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the game and let you know about special units like rifle-armed units. Now, when you're playing a Labatai game, uh, your light units uh, usually have the option of being in a couple of different uh, formations. So you could have them in uh, column, uh, or you could put them into line formation. Um, if you are going to have them in skirmish mode, then you're going to flip the counter over so it's reverse side shows. And if the unit has four or more increments in it, it's going to be straddling two different hexes. So it's going to look something like this, where it's setting there and it's got, um, it's kind of there in between the two hexes. So this is the standard presentation for a light unit. Now, the uh, facing for a light unit is it's got multiple front hexes. So it's got uh, the three that are here in front. It also has front out to the sides. And then here it's got, these are the rear or flank hexes. So it's got altogether five front hexes when it's in this type of uh, um, two hex uh, setup. Um, if, for example, this unit had taken losses and it was just down to one um, hex side, or I mean to one hex, um, then it's going to have one, two, three, four front hexes, and then it's going to have these two rear hexes. Um, so that's then the situation with the uh, how you would present um, the uh, units when you've got them set up. 
Now, the next thing that is particular with the skirmishers is how you should use them. So generally speaking, you're not going to be using skirmishers to hold on to key terrain. They're not designed for that. They're designed for um, basically uh, uh, absorbing incoming attacks, disrupting incoming attacks, um, maybe covering a particular area, but they're not meant to hold ground. Uh, so here with this particular setup here that I've got with this skirmisher, um, he has an advantage in that he can fire at a two hex range and he could then hit this uh, Prussian fusilier while the fusilier uh, can only fire at the hexes that are adjacent. So uh, units that are in skirmish uh, order have the ability to fire at two hexes or more, depending on if they're rifle armed. Um, and so that's an advantage over both most like main line infantry that can only fire at adjacent hexes in either line or column. Um, now, where the, uh, the skirmish have an advantage is um, if you're going to have, uh, say, an enemy unit come up to attack, uh, the skirmishers are going to have a chance to fire uh, during their defensive fire phase, and then the uh, attacker will have a chance to fire during their offensive fire phase. Um, but then when it comes time for melee combat, uh, the skirmisher has the option to retreat before combat. And so usually uh, you're going to want to do that because the units that are in skirmish order, their melee value, in this case it's a melee value of 18, it's going to be halved because the unit is sort of dispersed. The men are not in a tight fighting formation. Instead, they're kind of dispersed over that, over that space, kind of sniping away, and so they don't have as strong an assault uh, or you know, a melee value. So generally speaking, you're not going to have your skirmishers stand and fight. Instead, you're going to retreat them back. And with almost all of the Labatai rule sets, um, you're going to be able to retreat away from formed infantry. So if you're being attacked by, you know, a, a unit that's in column or line, you're going to be able to uh, escape from it. Uh, in some of the rule sets, if you're if you're being assaulted by another skirmish unit um, that's got, you know, the same or better movement value than yours, you might not be able to retreat. So check with the specific rules that you're playing with. Um, but generally speaking, if there's a case where there's going to be an assault here, you're going to want to to have this unit move back, um, and then uh, the opposing unit uh, has an option, put, depending on the rule set, to advance into the hex that was vacated. Um, and then perhaps they can then launch an attack against another adjacent unit, um, but check your specific rules for that. Um, so that's what you're going to be doing most of the time. Skirmishers are great for firing, uh, but they're not really designed for holding territory. Now, skirmishers are most vulnerable to enemy cavalry. So if they are charged, um, in most cases, they're going to have an opportunity to retreat into uh, maybe a friendly unit that's adjacent or into general order terrain that is adjacent. If they're out here kind of on their own, like this poor chap is, um, depending on your rule set, you might be able to form a square, uh, but in some of the rules, you don't have that as an option. And if you don't have anywhere to go, you're going to be ground up and trampled by the enemy cavalry. So when you are setting up and putting your skirmishers out, um, you're going to want to have a friendly unit somewhere nearby. Um, so that way, then, if this attack comes through, the skirmisher unit can retreat back into this friendly unit and then this one could form square, and you deal with the combat or you deal with the, the cavalry attack as such. Um, but if the skirmishers are all out there by their own, um, they're, in, they're in potential trouble from uh, an incoming cavalry charge. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is put them somewhere uh, near or adjacent to a, a general order terrain, uh, villages, woods, uh, towns, uh, marshes, things like that, um, that give them an opportunity to retreat back into that type of terrain um, where then they can, you know, receive the enemy charge in general order. Um, they would come out of skirmish mode. They would be then in, in, uh, in general order, and then they're going to 
fight more effectively, or the cavalry is going to be fighting at a detriment since cavalry attacking the general order are thirded, and so hopefully your unit's going to survive. So generally speaking, try to set up your, your skirmishers either where they have a friendly unit nearby that they can retreat to, or they have general order terrain adjacent that they can retreat to. Now, another common usage for skirmishers is to actually act as a screen for units behind them. So in the Labatai games, the skirmishers have a better fire defense. Um, usually it's 12 or 14, um, depending on which battle and scenario you're playing, um, as, as opposed to uh, you know, units that are in column or in line. So usually the fire defense is at least twice um, what the uh, other units would have. So in this particular case, I've got, uh, you know, an enemy artillery unit down here. Um, I want to protect this heavy cavalry unit from the artillery. So I put the skirmisher there in front of it. Um, if you're playing with a game that does not have the ricochet rules, um, then the, uh, the skirmisher is going to be the only one that's going to get hit. So if you're playing with Premier, that's what's going to happen. If you're playing with one of the rule sets that has the ricochet, then uh, you know these guys would suffer or potentially you know, do something, and then this one's going to get hit next, but there's going to be a penalty on the, f the fellow who's firing it. So your chances of, of hitting units that are further behind are going to be diminished, and so therefore having... Uh, some skirmishers out in front can then block incoming attacks um, and, and make it harder for uh, your opponent to uh, hit you. Um, uh, the other thing that you want to pay attention to is, um, generally speaking, cavalry and other units can move through skirmishers as they come out to attack. So maybe in a subsequent turn we want to have this unit charge they can charge through the skirmisher. There's no impact on the skirmisher. Or the skirmisher can retreat back through these units, and there's no penalty for the skirmisher or the units for the skirmishers moving through. So the skirmishers, uh, it's a good way to kind of set up a screen, prevents your units from behind getting hit, and then you can charge through the skirmishers or you can move through the skirmishers or the skirmishers can fade back. Um, so lots of different possibilities uh, for how you would want to set things up for an upcoming attack. You want to get this cavalry here so it can charge the, say, the artillery, but uh, you don't want the artillery to get a couple of free shots at it. Put the skirmisher up in front of it to kind of give it a bit of a screen, and uh, then it's less likely that that cavalry is going to get hit by ricochet uh, or by the artillery. So that's another option for you. Now, another handy thing that you can use skirmishers for is to cover a large area. Um, so in this particular example, these two uh, skirmish infantry units, are uh, their zone of influence stretch all the way from here all the way to there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight hexes all together that they can cover. Um, so that's that's a lot. Um, you know, normally it would take you, uh, you know, maybe uh, four units if they were just in line to try to cover the same amount. So these two skirmishers can do a lot. And provided that you're only up against uh, enemy infantry, um, you're going to be safe doing something like this. So generally speaking, you're using skirmishers to maybe cover a, a big area, and uh, they act as sort of a speed bump. Um, so if all I've got is these Prussians, all they have are this uh, infantry, um, you know, they're going to come up and they're going to exchange some fire. Um, if they do an assault, then the skirmishers are going to retreat before combat. Um, and then the, uh, the, you know, Prussians can advance. And it's just a way of slowing down your opponent. Um, if all they have is infantry, your skirmishers can just act as a delaying force, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down the enemy as they come forward. And, uh, and then depending on what's going on on the battlefield, um, this then gives you a chance to rush reinforcements over there or to, um, you know, 
fade back and, and prepare another line of defense kind of a thing. Um, so some different options, but definitely the skirmishers in this particular case, uh, you know, if they're deployed in two hexes like this, they're covering a lot of uh, frontage um, with their zones of influence, and that's then hard for your opponent to work around. They've got to just keep attacking you, or they've got to take a long trip around um, to avoid your zones of influence. So another option for skirmisher usage. So unless the scenario rules specify something to the contrary, you can have your skirmishers deployed in skirmish mode in woods, in villages, um, in towns, in uh, forests, and in marshes and other types of general order terrain. Um, and so that gives you lots of flexibility. Um, it's good because then the skirmishers are protected from cavalry uh, just because they're already in uh, good terrain. Um, and then, of course, they can fire out of that terrain uh, at opponents. Um, their fire value, unlike other units that would be in, in general order terrain where it's their printed value, the skirmishers are still using their uh, multiplier, their fire multiplier, for being in skirmish mode. So this is an excellent way for uh, you to uh, you know, be fighting in the woods, um, have your units in skirmish order in the woods, they're going to be more generally more effective than having your units in general order where the printed fire value, in this case it's the fire value is 8, and you'd just be in one hex. Um, if you have this deployed here, you probably have a fire value of 12 um, out of each hex, um, or maybe 9 out of each hex, depending on what the scenario specifies. Um, so that's going to be then uh, much more beneficial for you. Um, so having your units in skirmish order in the woods gives you better fire value than if you're in general order. So another option for you. Well, that's a little bit of information uh, talking about how the infantry skirmishers work in La Bataille. As I said, check the rules and scenario booklets uh, for specifics on the units that are involved in the battle that you're playing. Uh, the British light companies that are present at many of the different battles operate very similarly to the skirmish rules, but they have a few exceptions, so definitely check that in the scenario rules. As I mentioned at the top of the video, Mark is one of the Imperial Old Guard supporters on Buy Me a Coffee. If you'd like to support me, you can for two, five, or ten dollars a month and enjoy the benefits of membership. So uh, take a look at that in the link below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. And if you have questions or suggestions for future video topics, go ahead and make those in the comment section below. Until our next episode, keep playing those war games and have fun, and of course, be well.